flow. Oh. Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is CJ. Welcome back to episode 22 of 120 gallon reef tank. Now this episode is going to be all about flow. Everything you need to know about these gyre 230s, 250s, 280s, everything gyre. The flow patterns I use, at least that I like to use, and more importantly, how to program the gyre controller. These controllers have tons of different options built into them, enough to where I would say you don't even need any kind of Apex modules or any kind of expensive add-ons. Trust me guys, these controllers can do it all. So with that being said, you know, what's the importance of flow in a reef tank? Well, in my brief time in the hobby, I'll tell you what, this is one of the things a lot of people don't talk about enough. In my opinion, it's just as important, if not more important than the lighting and the parameters in your tank. Corals can't move. Corals are completely dependent on flow to bring them food and to take all their waste away. So trust me guys, if you're slipping on your flow, you're definitely not setting yourself up for success. So let's go ahead and get into this vid. I'm gonna take you guys through everything I've learned about this gyro. Now two very important things you wanna consider, especially if you're gonna be using these gyros. And it always works better if you plan this out during the build process and the scaping process of your tank and not later when it's already established. What kind of cores are you gonna keep and what kind of scape do you want to have? You know, if you're gonna keep a mixed reef, high and low flow corals, you're gonna have to build in natural eddies, natural dead spots in your tank, otherwise it'll never work with these gyros. They move too much water. And on the other side, you know, maybe you want an all SPS, bare bottom. That's the kind of situation, keep your scape low, limit anything that's actually breaking the gyro flow pattern, and that is gonna be the best way for that. So ultimately guys, make sure you decide what kind of tank you want before you put water in it. So let's go ahead and jump right into this gyro controller. If you want the actual details on how to operate it, go check out the Coral View site. I'll put the website link down in the description for anyone that would rather read this. But I'm gonna give you a quick crash course on how to program and use this Gyrus 200 series controller. You know, you got three buttons, a power, the double arrow, the spin dial, and the button in the middle that lets you switch between the settings. So let's get to it. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at some of the manual settings that are available. To access it, as long as you're in manual mode, you just hit the double arrows. It'll automatically take you to pump A. You can start manipulating it. In this case, it's on pulse mode, so you can change the power of the pulse and the frequency of the pulse, or switch it to whatever mode you want for pump A. Now after that, pump B is where things get interesting. Pump B is where you actually can set the pumps to be synced or anti-synced or, you know, time delayed. That is where you actually make the pumps work together or you can set that up to work on its own. But keep in mind, depending on the setting of pump A, you may or may not be able to sync or anti-sync them. So play around with the settings and it will remember the power for every setting you choose. So definitely a neat feature built into the controller. Now, before we can jump into any of the pre-programmed options on the controller, we have to set the time for it first. So to access this, press both the power and the double arrow button at the same time It'll put you right into the military time clock, set the time, and that's all you need to do. Now, it also has a couple of power options for the pump, so I don't play around with that too much. But at the end of the day, you get the time set, press the double arrow button to lock it in, and then we can keep it moving. Now, when it comes to accessing the pre-programmed options, very, very simple, guys. Just hold down the double arrow button for five seconds. You'll see two options, LTC, known as the Lunar Tidal Cycle, or OGC, known as the Oceanic gyro cycle now once you choose which one you want you can change the maximum power for that actual option and it'll automatically cycle through whatever its pre-programmed settings are throughout your 24-hour day based off the time you have the gyro controller set so basically this is a set it and forget it if it works for you use it in my situation i choose to do something else so last but not least one of the best options that ever could have included is going to be something called automatic mode now accessing this, very simple. Just hold down the double arrow button until you see A on the screen and also A1 as one of the preset options on the left. Once you see that, you know you're in the right place. At this point, it's just manually manipulating everything based off the clock, you know, the time you want the program to run, and then each pump individually. And this is where it can get tricky. You know, that's why I don't recommend starting right off in this mode. 
definitely start off in manual mode first where you can see both pumps settings at the same time and you can really start correlating the flow pattern in your tank with what you're seeing after you get familiar enough with it come to this place and program whatever you want because you can have endless possibilities you can have both pumps running together anti-sync them standing waves you know random whatever you want and get this it has 24 different presets available meaning you can have the flow pattern change 24 times over a 24 hour period to whatever you want I've yet to find any controller that gives you that kind of flexibility without the need of some kind of apex or some kind of module or anything else that costs you a lot more money now after you get one program set you know go to A2 do the same process again go to A3 do the same process again over and over and over I do recommend you leave A1 starting at 0000 or at midnight and build your cycle up from there I have yet to see the you know complications or what may happen if you somehow mess the time up you know meaning you got one set point starting at midnight one starting at one the next starting at five the next one starting at two I think the controller is smart enough to figure that out but in my mind it just makes sense starting from midnight moving forward but at the end of the day really really glad that I was able to discover this you know shout out to Michael over at Aaron's Aquarium for doing that random live stream a while ago and I'm hoping that anyone that's watching this you know if this is new to you you really realize how valuable this controller can be running two pumps and random flow patterns in your tank now I know a lot of you guys may be curious at this point you know what's the flow patterns look like in the tank what's your favorite ones and the biggest question you know what size gyre should I get for my tank so can't really answer all of those but I'll try my best now for those that are new this is a 120 gallon four foot by two foot by two foot aquarium so anyone that has a 75 or you know a 90 gallon 120 we're all pretty much in the same wheelhouse as far as footprint so keep that in mind as far as what you're looking at now I'm running them at 100% just to let everyone know how much flow my tank actually can handle as far as sand not moving and corals not being torn apart now a lot of that has to do with how the gyres fight each other and also how the corals are placed in the tank now a lot of you guys may be wondering you know how do I have you feel you're surviving 100% flow and every situation of flow is not good for them but there are dead spots in every tank the key is trying to find those dead spots when you're mounting those cores that don't like a lot of flow in my situation specifically underneath the gyres meaning the bubble core on the left side of the tank doesn't like flow and the euphilia on the right side of the tank it doesn't like getting bashed either so what I found is two gyre systems have a lot of flow in the middle where the flow meets and less flow underneath the gyres so it's kind of a safe zone whenever you have one gyre running then you get that full gyre effect from left to right or from right to left whichever way you're running it and of course your safe spots underneath the gyre that's running and your most flow is going to be hitting on the opposite side so you know if you're going to run one gyre keep that in mind as far as your core replacement if you're going to run two definitely do not put any low flow corals between them as in, in the middle of the tank I learned that lesson so what's my favorite flow at this point well honestly guys every new core I add changes the dynamics of that answer you know if I add a soft core somewhere I gotta consider it in the flow pattern but thus far I would say the standing wave is by far the safest pattern to run with two gyres understanding that you're gonna have a significant downforce in the middle of the tank but every other place in the tank is usually pretty safe plenty of water movement but no strong blast and that's what you need for these corals water moving and not jets at them now my next two flow patterns to help stir things up would be the alternating pulse 10 seconds at whatever percentage I run whether it's 70 or 80 percent and then also creative flows meaning non-synced flows my latest one I've discovered is going to be standing wave on the right with the right gyre and the left gyre running independently at random flow so every jet of water it sends is 40 80 10 percent whatever percentage creates a downforce in different spots in the tank now those are my three favorite right now the ones i don't actually like as much 
are going to be the two that are pre-programmed modes. The lunar tidal cycle, the oceanic gyro cycle appears to not move as much water as I like throughout the day. And then, of course, the reverse gyro. That is probably the most worthless flow pattern that you ever can have. Basically, barely moves anything. You get limited to no surface agitation. And that's just this one I don't really like to use with these gyros. Now, one of the major benefits of these gyros has to be this surface agitation. You just can't get this from a Vortec or any kind of stationary pump that you can't direct upwards. So not only do you get surface agitation, you also avoid blasting any coils directly because all the water is going upwards first. So definitely a major benefit. Now there is one other feature on the controller that you know a lot of people may or may not use, and that's the feed mode. Just really quick, uh, you can change it. I believe it goes all the way up to 45 minutes. I don't know who needs a 45 minute feed mode, but the option is available. But it does a great job of just turning off the pumps, allowing all the fish and everything else to kind of get to the food before it gets blown all over the tank and gets trapped inside all the Bukani rocks. So a feature that I use frequently, and I definitely am glad it's built into the system. So what's the final verdict on these max spec gyres? Well, in my opinion, they are the best pumps you can get on the market as far as moving water in your tank. Now, the controller is fantastic. Hands down, the best controller I think you can find, especially with 24 preset options that you can program into it. Those are the great things. Now, the things I don't like, first of all, the ease of maintenance, taking that thing apart and the frequency. You have to do that without losing you know, your flow in your tank is really annoying. And the noise, you know, depending on the size you get, if you have to run that thing over 40, 50, 60 percent, then you will hear that whine every time. And that gets annoying, too. So I think if they was to find a way to silence the pump and ease the maintenance, then hands down, there would be no other competitor to this. But overall, still recommend this for water movement. Great value, a great product. So. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this vid. I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. And as always, hey, you guys like, comment, subscribe. You guys keep doing what y'all do. Y'all be easy and happy reefing.